Okay, in this video we're going to install the FTK app on our header machine that's in our distributed processing network. Now, installing FTK, installing the app is the last step that we want to do. So, we're going to assume that I already have my worker set up, I have my Oracle database set up, I have my cases, and I have my evidence server set up. Because we want to do FTK last because we actually want to point it to all those things that already exist that's, that are in our network. We can do it the other way. You can install it first and then do the other things later. But then you have to go right back into it and point it back to those anyway. So we're just going to do it last. Now here's the, uh, the big FTK install ISO that I have on the desktop over here. And I already have it mounted in virtual clone drive. So I can just open up my computer. And you can see it's, it's already mounted over here. It looks just like any other drive. So I'll double click on that. And then we get the FTK install window. And what we're going to do is we're going to install FTK, so we'll click on this one right here. And I'm on a 64-bit PC, so I'll pick the 64-bit install. And you can see we got some steps that we go through to do this. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to install the code meter software. What the code meter software is, is it's, it's the software that, l that lets FTK recognize its security device, which is a dongle. And it's, it's one of these right here. Next. Accept the agreement. Next. That looks good. And we'll just let it install. Okay, it's finished. Doesn't take long. You heard the noise. It found it found the dongle as soon as it installed the software for it. Because I already have it plugged into the box here. Okay, and step number two, we're going to install FTK. We'll take English. And this comes up most of the time, too, because it has some requirements to, to run FTK. And, and what it'll do is it'll check to make sure you have them. If you don't, it'll install these things for you. So we'll let it install. the default. Alright, we're all finished with that. It's going to give us a little sheet here to look at that talks about the distributed processing stuff that you can read when you actually do it. And then we'll go over here to step three, which is install a processing engine. And we'll let it go through this, and we'll join back up when it's finished. Okay, so that's finished. And now we're going to run FTK. So it actually has to initialize before we install the KFF. So we'll run it. And what it's asking us for is where is this database that you want to, this Oracle database that I'm supposed to use? It's a, it defaults to localhost, but that would that would be in the case if we were doing FTK on an installation on a single machine. Since we're in a distributed network, we're going to put the IP address of where our Oracle database is. And in this case, I have it on 192.168.1.5. It'll go out and try to connect to the database. And if, it, if it's successful, it'll keep going. And if it's not, it'll, it'll throw an error showing you that you, you've done something wrong. So let's see if it worked. So it's got it already across the network. And then it's going to ask us for a username. When we're doing uh, this in our distributed lab, we use CPCC for everything. So we'll go ahead and just put in all caps CPCC in every box. Keep it consistent. And then, okay, and now you have it installed. Okay, in a normal installation, the next thing we would do is we would install the KFF. But when we do a distributed processing setup, we don't install it this way because it has to be installed on the local Oracle database. So we're going to skip that step right now. So let's bring up our, our user interface again here. Now what we want to do is I want to go ahead and run it, and we want to plug in some of those places that that exists in our distributed network so we can see how that works. So the next thing I want to do is I want to add a worker 
to this network that I've set up. So I'm going to go up here to Tools, Processing Engine Configuration, and I'm going to put in the IP address of one of the workers that's in my network. And I have one at 192.168.1.7. So I can go ahead and add him right there. So now he's in the list and he's enabled. Now we can add up to two, two more workers for a total of three plus our, our header unit. But just for this example, I'm just going to stick with the one. We would add the other two in the exact same way we do point 1.6, 1 1.5, whatever it happens to be. So I'm going to close that. Then I'm going to go ahead and start a new case. So we can see how that works. So I'm going to go up here to Case, and then New. We need, we'll come up with just a general name. We'll, let's just call it New, N-E-W. And you can see the Cases folder directory here is already filled in because I've done this before. But if I hadn't, we'd click on the three little dots over here. And you can navigate to wherever it is that you want to make that Cases folder. And I have a distributed Cases folder on another PC that's in our network. So you could click over here to Network. Barney 5 is the one that I have it on, distributed cases. You could put it anywhere you wanted or any way you had it set up. So we have that all finished, so we're just going to click OK. It's going to create the case for us. OK, and then this is our screen where we manage the evidence that we have. And our evidence in this uh, distributed processing network that we have set up is on another PC as well in our network. So we'll click over here to add. We're going to add an acquired image. And it's on the network over here. So I'm going to go down to Barney 6, is where I have my evidence drive. I'll expand that. There's the test for safe boot image, and there's the file that I'm looking for. This is a test image that we use in our labs all the time. So I can go ahead and click OK on that. And I'm almost ready to, to run it and make sure it works. The, the last thing I have to do right now is I'm going to choose a time zone. Okay, everything looks kind. I'm going to I'm going to take the uh the default refinement options. That's not something that we'll go over this time. All of our paths look correct. So we'll go ahead and click okay and see if it works. So it's got it queued up. And it looks like everything's working pretty well. If it doesn't find the distributed processing workers, if it doesn't find the remote database or the evidence or the cases folder, it'll throw an error and you'll know that you've done something wrong. So we can always check back on this data processing status window to make sure everything's doing all right. But it's it's running away, so that's that's how we want to set up FTK on our header machine and get our case running.